So today we're going to be talking about glaucoma. Glaucoma is often referred to as the silent thief of sight because people often lose about 40% of their side vision before they even realize that something is going wrong. On top of this, glaucoma is usually a painless condition, so people don't feel like anything's changing with the eye, and again, they don't notice their side vision changing, so it often goes unnoticed until it's truly too late. Now, the good news is that even though damage from glaucoma and vision loss from glaucoma is permanent, we are getting very good at detecting it, and our treatments are getting better and better. So today, we're going to be talking about not only what is glaucoma and the two most major common types of glaucoma that people are diagnosed with, but then we'll talk about various ways that we test for glaucoma and monitor it over time in case your doctor wants to run these tests. But then we'll also talk about the most common treatments that are now used to help treat and prevent vision loss from glaucoma in case you or a loved one is ever diagnosed with this condition. But first, my name is Dr. Joseph Allen. I'm a board certified doctor of optometry, and this channel is all about helping you learn about the eyes, vision, and finding the best vision products. If you are new here, consider hitting the subscribe button down below and turning on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Otherwise, Let's talk about glaucoma. So glaucoma is an eye disease that really isn't just one disease. It's actually a group of different eye diseases where the optic nerve in the back of the eye gets damaged. You can think of the optic nerve as sort of the data cable that connects the eyeball to the brain, where the eye sends data signals to the brain, which the brain interprets, and that gives you your vision. The downside is that when that data cable gets damaged, there are interruptions in the data transmission, and that results in little blind spots in your vision. Most of the time, the damage that occurs to the optic nerve happens because the pressure inside of the eye becomes too high, something we call elevated intraocular pressure, or IOP. Now let's use an analogy for this next point. Imagine that the eyeball is like this sink here. So inside of the eye, there is a fluid called the aqueous humor that is produced, and it circulates inside of the eye to nourish all of the tissues. Now, this aqueous humor is produced, and then it drains out through what is called the trabecular meshwork. And usually the production and the drainage of this fluid is perfectly balanced. So while it's being produced, it is also draining out of the eye, just like water coming out of the faucet and draining out of the sink. But in most types of glaucoma, the drain either gets clogged or it just doesn't work as well as it should. But that faucet keeps running, so what happens is the fluid pressure builds up inside of the eye, and that leads to a higher level of eye pressure. And that elevated pressure pushes on the nerve in the back of the eye and slowly damages it over time. Now, it's important to know while elevated high pressure inside the eye is one of the biggest risk factors for glaucoma, it's not the whole story. In fact, some people develop glaucoma even with normal eye pressures, something that we call normal tension glaucoma, which could be a result of either somebody having a fragile nerve or perhaps their blood supply to the optic nerve isn't very good. But the important thing to remember is that glaucoma is where the nerve progressively gets damaged over time. And even if eye pressure isn't an issue, it's one of the biggest risk factors and something that we often try to control with treatments for glaucoma. So now let's talk about the different types of glaucoma. The first most major type of glaucoma is called open angle glaucoma, and it accounts for about 90% of all cases. This is where the drainage angle inside of the eye is open, just like the name sounds. This is where the iris, the colored part of the eye, comes in contact with the cornea, the clear window to the eye. The problem is that the drain inside of the eye becomes clogged or inefficient in some way, sort of like the sink analogy and the sink getting clogged over time. The problem is that the drain clogs and the eye pressure creeps up so slowly over time that even though it's causing damage to the nerve, you don't feel it and you don't notice that the side vision is going away until again, it's too late. Again, exactly why they call it the silent thief of sight. 
Risk factors for this type of glaucoma include being over the age of 40, having a family member who has glaucoma, also having any sort of African or Hispanic descent, or having health conditions such as diabetes may increase the risk. Now next, let's talk about a different type of glaucoma called angle closure glaucoma. While angle closure doesn't happen as often, it is much more dramatic and urgent. This is where the iris inside of the eye usually bows forward and physically closes off off the angle inside of the eye, which results in a very rapid rise in eye pressure, sort of like putting a physical stopper in the drain of a sink. And unlike the silent cousin of open angle glaucoma, an acute angle closure attack results in sudden and painful symptoms. This includes not only eye pain, but an extreme headache. People often see sort of like halos and blurry vision around lights. And then people may even have nausea and vomiting. And I mention all of this because it is considered a true medical emergency. If you're having any of these sort of symptoms, it's important to call your eye doctor and get seen right away. Because with elevated eye pressure spiking as fast as it does, if we don't lower the pressure quickly, it can result in permanent vision loss, even in just a few hours. Usually the people who are at highest risk of an angle closure attack are women who are over the age of 65 and happen to be farsighted. In fact, the more farsighted they are, they may have an even higher risk of getting this sort of issue. Okay, so now that we've talked about the different types of glaucoma, let's talk about the different tests that doctors will do or order in order to not only diagnose glaucoma, but also manage and follow it over time. Because if you're gonna be assessed for glaucoma, it's probably good for you to be familiar with what we're doing and why we're doing it. The first test that you're probably gonna see is called tonometry. This is where we physically measure the pressure of the inside of the eye. You may recall an older test called the air puff test that's sometimes still used, but some more modern clinics like the one we have here, we have a handheld rebound tonometer that just sort of reaches out and tickles the surface of the eye that you can barely feel, and this gives us a reading of the eye pressure. Otherwise, doctors often do use a blue light shined onto a tonometer probe that just just barely touches the surface of the eye with some anesthetic to numb the eye, but that gives us a very high accurate reading of the eye pressure. An eye pressure that's considered normal is between 10 and 21 millimeters of mercury. If anybody's eye pressure is above 21, that may be a red flag to most doctors to say, hey, we should double check this pressure or consider doing additional tests for glaucoma. However, a big but here is that even if someone's pressure is above 21, it doesn't necessarily mean they have glaucoma. There are people who have eye pressures that are elevated, but we just never see progression in their vision loss or damage to their nerve. That being said, those individuals who have high pressures still may be at higher risk, and so doctors should be monitoring that. Another test you'll probably see is called gonioscopy. Gonioscopy is where your doctor will put a specialized contact lens on the surface of the eye that has some mirrors on it. And this allows the doctor to look at the drainage angle inside of the eye to determine how open or closed it may be. And this test is done not only to determine what type of glaucoma somebody may have, but also to determine if they are a good candidate for some forms of treatment. Now, some imaging tests that doctors often use include not only taking photographs of the optic nerves in the back of the eye, which we can use to help monitor for damage over long lengths of time, but now there's some newer technology called an OCT, or an optical coherence tomographer. This sort of scanning technology gives us almost like an MRI of the tissue in the back of the eye, including showing us specific parts of the nerve that can be damaged due to glaucoma. In fact, we can catch certain patterns of nerve loss that will tell us if somebody's probably developing glaucoma years before they actually experience any vision loss. In fact, I would say most of modern day glaucoma evaluations include some form of OCT imaging because it is so sensitive and good for picking up early detection in glaucoma. 
And getting an OCT scan of the eye doesn't require any input from you as the patient. Unlike the other test that we most commonly use for glaucoma is that of visual field or automated perimetry. This is where you look through kind of a visual field sort of test that basically sends little light flashes to the sides of your vision and you click a button whenever you think you saw something show up in the sides of your vision. We basically shine these lights off to the side of your vision and they change the brightness levels so that they can kind of determine when you can just barely see the light and it helps map out your side vision with really high accuracy. But I will admit that test can be really frustrating as a user because it kind of gives you some anxiety if did you see that flash of light or not? And then from the doctor's point of view, it also can be frustrating because if the accuracy of the test is really poor, then it may not be super valid to us. And then we have to ask you to repeat it and it can get frustrating on both sides. However, that is one of the only ways for us to actually map out and know exactly what a patient is seeing or not. Thankfully, the profession does have a lot of like new virtual reality headsets that are being adopted for this testing, and that's making it much more efficient and user-friendly. One last test I thought I would mention is that of an ERG or an electroretinogram. Another one exists that's called a VEP or a visually evoked potential, but this is where they put small electrodes on the outside of your eyelids and they flash some lights into your eyes. It's very quick, but from that they can detect what type of electrical information is being sent through the retinal tissue, through the retinal ganglion cells, through the optic nerve to your brain. And there's evidence that just with those tests alone, they can detect glaucoma up to about seven years in advance. It tells us a lot about the health of the nerve, the retina, and the structures between the eye and the brain. Now, depending on somebody's risk for glaucoma, your doctor may ask or order these tests to be done maybe once a year to twice a year to sometimes four times a year or more for more aggressive or severe types of glaucoma. One other side comment I'll just put in here as a doctor who practices here in the United States is that insurance companies sometimes dictate which tests we can order on which dates. They won't let us just do all of these tests at once. They sometimes make us kind of have people back on a different day to order a different test. I don't think there's any logical reasoning behind that, but that's the way the system works right now. So you may have to talk with your doctor and they may be ordering tests and having you come back at different times so that they don't have to send you a bill for like a cash pay option to do all those tests. Just want you to be aware that that is an issue and that's why that happens. So now let's talk about treatments for glaucoma. Because if you or loved ones ever diagnosed with glaucoma, you wanna know how do you stop things? How do you keep your eyes seeing the best as they can? Because unfortunately, with glaucoma, once nerve damage has been done, there's no way of getting it back. But the good news is that our treatments to lower the eye pressure and to stabilize the eye and prevent it from losing more vision in the future, we've gotten really good with that. Now for most eye doctors, we have three major tools in our toolbox to treat glaucoma. The first one is laser therapies we have medications, and then we have more invasive surgical procedures. Now, historically, a lot of glaucoma treatment revolved around use of prescription eye drops to lower the eye pressure. The drops either would shut off the faucet in a way and reduce the amount of aqueous being produced inside of the eye, or it would clean up and improve the outflow through the drainage structures inside of the eye. Either way, if you've ever been prescribed an eye drop medication or doctors do prescribe you something in the future for glaucoma, it's really important to follow the instructions given to you by your doctor. There's many different types of eye drops out there and they work through different methods, but again, really important to keep using those drops. One additional thing I'll mention here is that a lot of glaucoma medications, while they're super important to be taking and people often are expected to be on them the rest of their lives to keep that eye pressure low, a lot of these medications are known to have side effects of causing more irritation to the ocular surface, including some of the preservatives in those medications. And that means people who take them are at a higher risk of developing ocular surface disease or otherwise known as dry eye disease. And because of that, I think it's important to talk with your eye doctor if they're putting you on these medications if it's something that maybe comes in a preservative-free formulation, or if they think maybe you're a candidate for a different type of eye pressure control. 
One product I also do want to mention is that of Nanodropper. I've worked with them in the past. Nanodropper is an attachment that goes on to a lot of eye drop medications for glaucoma and makes the size of the drop that comes out of the bottle smaller, essentially reducing the amount of volume that comes out of the bottle, also reducing the cost of how many drops, how often you have to renew those drops from the pharmacy, but also reduces the amount of preservative or side effect profile from those drops hitting the surface of the eye. In fact, many eye doctors and eye clinics often talk about this to their patients as a way to not only save cost, but also again, reduce the side effect profile. If you wanna learn more about Nanodropper, check out their website. I'll put some links in the description below. Now, again, historically, eye drop medications have uh, been our first line treatment in the past for glaucoma. However, new research and publications have come out that have shown that laser therapies are not only common, but they're efficient and safe for treating glaucoma. And they have a lot of great advantages, not just for lowering the eye pressure, but because it can be something quickly done in the eye clinic and then you, as the patient, don't have to worry about not only filling your medication prescription, but then putting it in all the time, and then you don't have all the side effects. So it largely is become now the first line treatment for people who are candidates for it. In cases of open angle glaucoma, the procedure that's usually done is called an SLT, or selective laser trabeculoplasty. This is not only just a quick in-office procedure, but it works through a fascinating method. The laser doesn't burn a hole or anything inside the eye. It just activates your own immune cells. And then your own immune cells clean out any of the cellular garbage that is clogging the drain inside the eye. And so then the fluid can drain out better and your eye pressure goes down. And what's great about this procedure is that it can be repeated. So if your eye pressure creeps back up years down the road, it can just be done again. And because this procedure is so safe and so efficient, that is why it's become the first line therapy now. And then for the people who are at risk of angle closure, there's another laser procedure called an LPI or a laser peripheral iridotomy. This is a procedure where the laser is used to create a small hole in the iris, which allows any of the trapped pressure to escape and drain out of the eye, lowering the eye pressure. Now, thankfully, most cases of glaucoma do respond well to either the laser therapy or the medications, the glaucoma eye drops, or a combination of the two. But for people who have either severe cases of glaucoma or really stubborn cases that don't respond well to the other treatments, then there are more advanced surgical procedures to help lower the eye pressure. One of which is called MIGS, or Minimally Invasive Glaucoma Surgeries. They actually implant a microscopic drainage tube inside of the eye or a couple of them to help lower the eye pressure. And this sometimes is combined hand in hand with cataract surgery because it can be done either in isolation or at the same time as other procedures. But even then, those procedures are usually more for mild to moderate cases of glaucoma. For people who have even more severe cases, then there are more traditional glaucoma surgeries such as a trabeculoplasty or tube shunts where they have to physically create a new channel for the fluid inside the the eye to drain out and lower that pressure. But again, those are for more severe or complicated cases of glaucoma. But thankfully, research is always ongoing to develop new treatments and strategies. We even now have an implanted medication that can be put inside the eye so that you get a continuous release of medication for months at a time without having to use any eye drop medications. So who knows what we're gonna have in the future. So always important to ask your doctor what is new and what they think is gonna be best for you. Now, I know we covered a lot in today's video, but the big key takeaway I hope that you walk away with is that early detection is key, especially for anybody over the age of 40. But if you haven't had an eye exam in the last year, please call your local eye doctor and be scheduled to have a full dilated eye exam. That's the best way for us to catch glaucoma and catch it before vision loss really begins. And if we can stop even just one person from developing glaucoma or having vision loss, then this entire video is worth it and I have done my job. 
Now from here, if you happen to find value in today's video, please do me a favor and hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. I know a common question that a lot of my patients ask is if there's anything lifestyle-wise that they can naturally be doing to either lower their eye pressure or reduce their chances of developing glaucoma. And this was a good question for me because it wasn't something really covered in my traditional schooling. So I've actually dove into the research and I found some interesting publications. And so we're gonna be producing some videos on exactly that. So again, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on that bell so you don't miss any of those future videos. But until then, keep an eye on it and we'll see you in those next videos.